one of my students asked me, why does factoring by grouping work? And so in this video, I'm going to try to answer that. It gets a little bit messy with the algebra, but I hope you can follow it. Otherwise, come and ask me questions in class. So if I have two algebraic binomials, some, some term with an x plus some constant term, multiplied by another one, just like it, but with different numbers. Now keep in mind, M, N, P, and Q here are just random variables. I didn't want to use A, B, and C because we use them in a general formula, and I didn't want to use X because we've already got it. So M, N, P, and Q are just um, integers, are just numbers. Yeah? They stand for integers in the binomial. When I multiply these out, let's see what happens. So I follow the, the rainbow method or FOIL, right, and multiply the first two terms together. Then I'm going to get MP multiplied together with my x squared term. The outside term gives me MQ x. Inside term is NP x. And the final term is NQ. The middle term then still gets added together. So I'll put that together, and now I have to put this, these two middle terms together with an adding sign, and they're multiplied by x, and then nq. So now the job of factoring is to go back the other way. So I start with this, and I want to try to put it back into this, but of course without knowing what it is. So the last term is fairly clear that it comes from multiplying n and q together. So you can get fairly close by looking at different factors of whatever number this is. Yeah, let's say nq is 15, then n and q could be 1 times 15 or 3 times 5, and that's it. There's only a few possibilities. Over here, this coefficient is going to come from multiplying m and p together. So that's very similar. You have a limited number of possibilities. It's just simply the factor of whatever number mp is. The middle term, however, comes from multiplying m and q together, right, with this one, and then adding it to n and p, so that, there's lots of different numbers that apply to that. But I can summarize, if this were my trinomial in general form, then I can write that mp is equal to a, B is this complicated bit, MP, I'm going to use the in different order, it doesn't much matter, MQ plus MP, and C is MQ. Now, in the factoring by grouping, you're asked to multiply A and C together first, right? The first and the last terms together in order to find out what you have to multiply to. So if I do that with my example here, I get AC equal to MNPQ. It's going to be this term times that term. And adding the two, the two letters together, right, B is equal to this MQ plus MP. So the reason why that gives me the right, the right quantities to go back to my double binomial is that AC is actually, if I take MQ together and NP together, then AC is equal to MQ times NP, and B is equal to MQ plus NP. And this is why doing that is going to give me the two factors that I need, MQ and NP, that are going to help me define which values I need to work with. But I can't just go straight to the, sig the single factors if I have this ax squared plus bx plus c, I can't go straight into two factors. I have to go over the factoring by group. Right, I first have to multiply ac together and figure out what number multiplies to give me ac and then what number those same two numbers have to add to give me b. And once I figure out what those are, then I'm going to split this middle term into those two values. So this becomes then our mp x squared, and then I put in here the two values I found, so mq x plus mp x, and then c is still our mq. 
And then when I factor here, I always get an x out plus the m is going to factor out. And I'm left with px plus q. And then in the second grouping, right, factoring by grouping, so putting these in two lines, in the second part, I'm going to have an n in common. And then I get px plus q left over. And then I have my two factors. px plus q is the one factor, pull that out, and then the other factor is what's left over, mx plus m. So those are my two factors. And if I go back to the beginning, those are the two factors I started out with. Of course, now I've got them in the other direction. Other way around, that doesn't matter. Multiplying 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2, so just likewise with, with these two factors here. Doing it with lots of little letters is actually more complicated than the real thing. In case you want, I'll do one example of the real thing, and then, um, yeah, then you'll see how it applies to a real problem as well. So let's say I had 2x squared plus x minus 3. And I'm told to factor and solve this by grouping. Or at least we're going to do it by grouping because we have a coefficient in front of an x term and then we know that's always going to be factored by grouping. So I first multiply 2 and negative 3 together and get negative 6. And then I look at the coefficient in front of the b term and say 1. And I want two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative 6 and add to give me 1. So I think about the factors of negative 6. Say there's 1 and 5 and 2 times 3, and one of them has to be negative. And then which one is going to give me a positive 1? Well, that's going to be this one. One of them has to be negative, so I need negative 2 and positive 3. Negative 2, positive 3 also adds to 1. So I first then split up the middle term into the two parts. So minus 2x plus 3x. It doesn't actually matter which order you put them in. I could have said plus 3x minus 2x. That would have ended up with the same answer. It's often easier to put it in the order so you get some more things to factor out. So I'm going to put the 2 with the 2. That's fine. So I get 2x factoring by grouping here. 2x and inside the brackets x minus 1. And from the second half I have a 3 and I also have x minus 1. So I factor out x minus 1 and I have 2x plus 3 equal to 0. And since I'm solving and not just factoring, I still have to set up the two equations. Either one of the factors could be equal to 0, so I could either have x equals 1 or x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And that's my final answer to the problem. Slice the three off. Okay, that's the end of the video.